a little bit more on Stephen Pinker and his book The Blank Slate, which he's talked about recently as part of the TED Talk series, and uh, it was quite illuminating, I think, the last 22 minutes. Uh, one of the things that he talks about, which I mentioned in a previous video, is this correlation he draws between the decline in sort of high art, or as he calls it, elite arts practices, in the 20th century, in which the, the, uh, the perceived cultural value and popularity of high art uh, is in decline. And he's co correlating that with the 20th century rejection, you might say, of traditional values in art. Uh, poems, that, poems that rhyme, pictures that look like things, stories with endings and narratives. Uh, he's saying, he's heavily implying that it's no surprise that there's a decline in, their, in the value of art if we've rejected all the things that art is supposed to do. That's what he seems to be saying, uh, which is to appeal to those kind of traditional aesthetics. I think it's flawed for reasons I've said elsewhere, but uh, what I think he's missing there, or what's, what could be extended from that, is, is other kinds of decline, which aren't necessarily um, uh, spoken about in, in ways which are quite as negative as Pinker talks about the decline in the value of certain contemporary art. Uh, so, for example, there's been, I would think, a serious decline in the popular understanding of science in the last couple of hundred years. Uh, certainly in the 17th century, science, while it wasn't the burgeoning science, certainly wasn't uh, a popular occupation, it wasn't something that everybody did. Nevertheless, there was enough of it about that uh, it was quite clearly understood. And in fact, I think there was a kind of political almost political um, will within those people practicing science that it should be commonly accessible that scientific proofs should be the kind of proofs which are um, uh, easily understood not complexly mathematical but um, kind of embodied and commonsensically physical uh, and certainly that's not the case science these days is, is largely mistrusted, it's largely undervalued uh, by uh, the man in the street, so to speak. So I think what you're seeing there is not, it's not uh, of course a lot of money is being spent on science, just as a lot of money is being spent on art, so it's not that. It's that, uh, Phoebe guy, stay, good dogs. Phoebe, Phoebe! <laughs> Come on, you two. Dogs after that, all the dogs are born. So it's not that, uh, that science itself as a whole enterprise is undervalued, it's certain aspects of its popular understanding have declined. And it takes uh, a large hadron collider to try to even partially capture the public imagination. So you might say that uh, elite science, like elite art, is in something of a decline. But I don't think we would follow that by saying, well, therefore, elite science is pointless, or elite science is emperor's new clothes, or elite science because it doesn't talk about the common sense world and because it makes uh, predictions and uses models of the world which are counterintuitive, is therefore, uh, is therefore spurious. We wouldn't say that. But we would say that it's just very, very hard. It's the preserve of certain people, not because they're the uh, uh, kind of hermetic elite, but because it's, it just is hard and only a certain number of people can have the will and the means to, uh, to gain access to its higher reaches. And yet, Stephen Pinker does say that pretty much those words in, um, in the blank slate, that, uh, that certain aspects of contemporary arts practice uh, do leave a lot of people cold.